Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome to Timber Falls, home for CNC creators like you. In today's video, we're going to go over the different ways to toolpath a 3D model. And I'm also going to show you some advanced techniques on how to get better detail out of your 3D carvings. To get started, we're just going to open up a new model and we're going to use a 20 by 20. We have max resolution. I'm using inches, bottom left corner, as our reference place. Now, the first thing I wanted to to start with was the different ways that you can import a 3D relief model. The main way that you import a 3D relief model that you may have purchased would be to go up here to relief and import 3D model. This will allow you to import your 3D model that you may have downloaded. The other way to import a 3D model is from your clip art library. The clip art library is a collection of pre-made 3D models, as well as 3D models that you may have saved into your Relief Clip Art Library. I'll link a video in the description below to show you how to add your own 3D models to this Clip Art Library. For this demonstration, we're just going to import a relief that I made. When my model is imported, it comes in in this 3D pasting tab. We have the size of our model down here. Now, these check marks keep the aspect ratio so if you change something down here it changes all the sizes if we make this 18 it will resize everything including the z height now right now our z height is at 1.3324 inches our material is going to be right around an inch and a quarter so i want to make my model basically one inch thick and that makes this whole project 13 by 12 the 3D model. We're going to center it and it's important to press the center button because you want the Z axis to be on zero and then the position is in the center of the material which is 10 by 10 because this is a 20 by 20 piece of material. And once we have everything where we want it and we have everything the correct size we just press our paste button and that imports our 3D model. We have to close this because it's trying to import another 3D model. Okay, now we're ready to start toolpathing. For the first demonstration, I'm just going to use whole relief. And what that means is it's going to try and carve all of the 20 by 20, including the waste material. We need a finishing bit and a roughing bit. The roughing bit is going to carve out most of the meat of the wood, and then the finishing bit will come back and do the details. For roughing for something like this, I normally would use a small enough bit to try and get in between the different places that may be open on this model. Like in between these tires where the spokes are, you'd want to try to have a bit small enough to at least rough out some of these areas that are deep down in between that tire. So for this, I'm going to just pick a 1 8 inch slim down shear bit. This is one of the Jenny bits from Cadence Manufacturing. I'll have a link to all of his bits in the description below. We're going to select that 1 8 inch down shear. Now we're just going to be using a raster tool strategy and we are going to change the angle of this raster slightly. I'm going to make it 20 degrees. I just want to do that so that my tool is not running in the direction of the grain of the wood. Our tolerance is 0 0.001 and that's how closely our cut is going to try and follow the details. So I actually selected the finishing bit as that 1 8. I meant to do this as the roughing bit. So I'm going to change this real quick. We're just going to get that 1 8 inch Jenny down shear. Same 20. The raster tool path. A profile pass is where it profiles the 3D. You can select this to profile before, during, or after the cut. I'm actually going to select after to have it profile the details after it roughs. We're going to allow it to go both directions because that'll be the quickest. Our tolerance is 0 0.001. Our allowance is 0 0.02. The allowance in your roughing bit is how much material is going to be left over for the finishing bit to carve. Now I want to select the correct finishing bit. So for this, we're going to use a taper ball nose. And I'm just going to select the 1 16th. This is the Skinny Jenny from Cadence Manufacturing. It's a very good carving bit. And it's what I use mostly for my 3D carvings. I'm going to leave the raster and the angle at 20. I'm going to come down here and change my safe Z to 0.0. 
zero five. Safe Z is how far the router is going to retract to the top of the material in order to make the carve. Because we're carving all of the material, we want this really small so there's very little retraction room in between the different moves. We need to define our material and the model thickness is just under an inch. So my material was 1.25 inches and that's going to leave us with an offset of about a quarter of an inch that we're just going to leave on the bottom of the model. This is what's going to hold the whole model onto the piece of the material. We are zeroing from the top of the material so we have a top selected. When I press OK it puts our model inside of that material. Now when we calculate it's going to calculate both the roughing and the finishing pass. You can see now that it's finished calculating that it's going to cut this red is all of the tool pathing and it's going to cut the whole material. All of these blue lines are the different movements or paths that the router is going to make outside of the cut. If we simulate this, you'll see that we carved our 3D model and the entire piece of material down to a quarter of an inch because that was what was left over in our material. And this looks pretty good. We got pretty good detail and everything came out nicely. I'm going to delete this simulation. Going back up here to our toolpath strategies, we had selected the Raster Classic. When you have whole relief selected, you get a few other options. You get Raster XY Classic, Spiral, and Spiral in the Box. The Spiral and the Spiral in the Box often can give a better finish because of the way the bit spirals from the inside and just works its way out until it's finished this model. I'm going to recalculate this model using the Spiral in a Box. You can see right here at the end how it's spiraling outwards towards the end of that project border. But simulate our cut. This toolpath has an advantage that it always moves in sort of a circle and that's always against the grain of the wood. This really helps with getting edges from different angles. It's a really great toolpath and it's one of the better toolpaths in CarveCo Maker. The problem with the spiral toolpath is you only get this option where you're using whole relief. Let's delete our simulation. When we select our area to machine we have a few other options automatic boundary selected vector and default layer now in carve co maker default layer and whole relief are kind of the same thing so really you have the automatic boundary and a selected vector. These two automatic boundary and selected vector are going to use a vector or a boundary to restrict where the 3D carving is going to take place. We're going to try the automatic boundary so I can show you how it creates a boundary around the 3D model. Now it's asking for an offset. Now this is how far outside of the boundary of the model that you want your automatic boundary to take place. Let's use a quarter inch 0.25 and we can select preview and this will scan our model and create a boundary that is a quarter inch outside of our model and you can see it's represented by this blue line and that means that the carving is only going to carve what's inside that blue line. But when we have automatic boundary selected, the only toolpath strategy that we're given is the Raster Classic. You do get more toolpath strategies in Maker Plus, but in Basic Maker it's just the Raster Classic. And so we'd want to use that angle that we used in the first cut, the 20 degree, to do our raster classic so that we're staying off of the grain of the wood. You can see now that it's it's only toolpathing what was inside of our blue line. And if we simulate this, you can see that it left all of this waste material and didn't carve that. We just carved down to our model. Let's delete this simulation. Now let's change our material setup. We had this offset of 0.25 at the bottom that left wood at the bottom of our model, but let's say that we wanted to cut this model out and have it come all the way to the base of the material. In this situation, if I use the automatic boundary, what's going to happen is that the eighth inch bit is going to carve down all the way to the base of the wood, and basically it's going to cut out our model. The problem with this is there aren't any tabs or anything that's built into this tool pathing that allow you to design a way to hold it in when it's being cut out. 
when we simulate this, we can see that this material right here is pretty much cut all the way through. Our simulation shows it at a 0.24999. It's basically a thousandth off from cutting all the way through. And that may have to do with our roughing allowance. Let's delete the simulation. Now the other option we have is selected vector. Now we're going to delete the automatic boundary. Now to use a selected vector, we have to have a vector to select. And right now there aren't any vectors on this 3D model. To get a vector around this 3D model, we're going to go up to Vector and Create. And all the way down at the bottom is the Relief Boundary Tool. Now what the Relief Boundary Tool is going to create a vector around the boundary. Now it uses the zero plane to draw out these vectors. So anywhere where the model goes to the zero plane is where these vectors will be drawn. Now I only need the border vector that goes around the outside, which is this one that I just deselected. I'm actually going to delete the rest of these vectors because I don't really need them. We're just going to select that border vector, that border vector that goes around the outside of my 3D model. And this is what we're going to use as our selected vector for our area to machine. Now the difference between selected vector and automatic boundary is there is no offset for the bit to cut outside of the model. When I calculate this, and this is going to carve everything that's inside of our selected vector. And if we simulate this cut, but you can see that the carving carved just the model itself. And the advantage of doing it with the selected vector is this 3D model is still held in by the waste material around it. Now to cut this out, we could then use, go back to our toolpaths and use a profile toolpath on that border vector that we created. And we would just run a profile path outside, selecting a bit. We can use that same 1 8 inch down shear bit. And we also could add bridges to this to hold in the model when it's being cut out. So if I added bridges, and I'm just going to use some 1 8 inch size bridges. I have four of them. We're just going to add them to the model. Now, I don't really like where it put those bridges. Let's, uh, let's remove those. Let's go down here to our Edit Bridges button, and this will allow us to put the bridges where we want them. So I'm just going to put one here, here, put one here. And those will be easy to sand off. And then once we calculate this, this will give us our profile toolpathing with bridges. Now, if I simulate both toolpaths, we would get our model cut out but held in with bridges. And that's the advantage of using the selected vector in your machine relief toolpath. Now, one more trick that I wanted to show you was if you did not get enough detail carved in your model and you wanted to go more detail in your carving. Let's say after you simulated this toolpath, you wanted to get more detail in part of your carving, but you didn't want to carve the entire model model over again. What you can do is using the same selected vector, we can create a vector to carve just a very specific place. So I'm going to come over here to my box tool. I'm just going to create a rectangle. And let's say that we wanted to re-carve just this engine part that was part of this tractor. If I create that box, I can use selected vector. Since I've already machined with the 1 8 inch bit and the 1 16th bit, we don't need a roughing option for the second toolpath. We're just going to pick a smaller bit. So I would go and pick this 1 32nd taper ball nose bit. And the 1 32nd is just going to carve inside of our selected vector. So when I calculate this, it's going to re-carve what was inside of that box. Let's run a simulation on the machine relief. We'll go ahead and simulate the profile. And then before I simulate, I'm just going to zoom in. Now I'm going to simulate my second machine relief. And you can instantly see how much more detailed the engine compartment and everything came out. But it still looks flawless and seamless with the other carving. And that's an advanced way to get more detail out of your 3D carvings. One last tip that I wanted to mention was about your material setup. At the bottom down here, we left the bottom offset of zero so that it would cut all the way through. If you leave the very small amount of material, say 0 0.02, 
Often you could get away with doing the automatic boundary, leaving a small amount of material. I call this onion skinning because the amount of material left over outside of your 3D model will be the whatever your bottom offset is. So if you leave 0 0.02 when you do the automatic boundary, that would leave 0 0.02 material. It wouldn't actually cut all the way through it. And then you could do something like using a utility knife or something to just cut that remaining material. But it does leave a little bit more to have to clean up. The profile and selected vector is a much cleaner way. So I hope this helps, guys. And that's the different methods to carving a 3D relief. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Guys, if you found this tutorial helpful, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and share this with someone. I'd like to give a big thanks to all of our Timber Falls Elite members. You guys keep the bit spinning, and we really appreciate your support. If you're interested in becoming a Timber Falls Elite, check out the link below or our website at timberfalls.us. Thanks, guys.